whatever Chupacabra is, it may not have originated in Puerto Rico, as many people think. I've been trawling through the Animal X database and have uncovered a bizarre coincidence. Back in 1955, a small boy by the name of Joey Uriel had an encounter that still haunts him to this day. This is Joey today. He lives in Tucson, Arizona. Now, bear in mind, this was some 40 years before the sightings in Puerto Rico. And before it got the name El Chupacabra. But the similarities are striking. I believe this could be the first ever sighting of El Chupacabra. Now listen to his story. I was uh, playing by the chicken coop uh, that we had uh, in the backyard of our house. And then all of a sudden I, f I heard the you know, outhouse door open, uh, kind of creaking open real slowly. And I saw this creature's head uh, looking over through the doorway. First thing that I saw was his eyes, and and then its head, and uh, I noticed it didn't have any ears. As it looked at me, it looked at me like a very, I don't know, uh, like it wanted me to come over to him. Like he, it seemed like I was his, he was the predator, I was the victim. Okay, Bill, but he was only about five years old when he saw this creature, so as a witness, how reliable can he be? Good point, Dan. But listen to what else he has to say. First, I thought it was the devil. First, I thought it was a, a, an alien from, you know, some creature from outer space. Who knows? I mean, I know what I saw. At, even at that, at that age, I, it's something like you never forget, you know, something that scares the hell out of you, you're going to remember it. What I saw is it looked like part kangaroo and part something else. It seemed like it was talking to me, you know, telepathy, you know. It, it was sort of like it was telling me, hey, come over here. Uh, I want you. I don't know what for. It maybe could have eaten it. A terrifying creature that communicates telepathically? Doesn't sound like anything from this world. So let's check out some earthly suspects. Natalie, some investigators say the attackers were dogs, wolves, or monkeys. What do you think of that? Well, Bill, certainly some of the evidence points to dogs. I mean, domestic dogs have been known to viciously attack livestock, but generally they'll only do so in packs. So we'd expect to see dozens of dog prints crisscrossing each other. But in the case of Chupacabra, we're only seeing two hind dog bite prints and not dozens. And when domestic dogs kill in packs, they behave in a similar way to African hunting dogs and painted dogs, by tearing and ripping into their prey. Their fangs can leave holes in the necks of their victims, but they don't suck blood. And anyway, Chupacabra hunts alone. As for monkeys, they have fangs and they can cause the same kind of damage. And of course, they don't suck blood. The story may have begun in Puerto Rico, but my darlings, it doesn't end there. Today, a new hot spot has emerged in Chile. And that's where I'm sending Daniel and Natalie. Dan and Nat will pick up the hunt for El Chupacabra in Chile's Atacama Desert, the driest place on Earth. This hostile desert is the closest thing to Mars on planet Earth. No wonder NASA uses the Atacama Desert as a training ground for future Mars missions. The plants and animals that live in this dry, barren wasteland are few and far between. But those that do have developed special survival techniques in a place where they measure rainfall by micrometers, if they measure it at all. If chupacabras are real, and many people think they are, then how could they live successfully in such an extreme environment with so few animals to prey on? <laughs> 